2014 Toyota Corolla radio replacement. Very simple step, you'll need a 10 millimeter, a plastic door panel tool remover, or you could use your fingers. What I did here, I grabbed right here and pulled towards me. I dropped the glove box just to be on the safe side on it, and you just want to pull towards you gently and just kind of work your way throughout the whole area. Grab the bottom, pull towards you. It's just held in by clips. Now you will have a connector for your hazard switch on there, so you want to be careful not to pull out too far. Unplug this. Basically, as you get this all off of here, so we'll have a connector here. You want to push the tab in while unplugging. You'll have a connector for this passenger airbag system. You'll have another tab here. Push this in while unplugging. I'm going to get this other side. Now you'll have four 10 millimeter bolts, two here. If you look on the other side here, you'll have two here. Well, it looks like somebody's done played with it before. This don't look like the right bolt. Oh, I can't tell it's in the dark, but it should be chrome. But anyways, remove those two, remove those two. Radio will be held in by little clips or so. And you'll have a bunch of connectors in the back. All right, so you'll have a variety of connectors. You'll have another one, I don't think another one, but just make note of where the connectors go. They kind of color coded to you, but I know it's like this one here. It doesn't have a connector. So when you go to plug it in, you might be trying to find, uh-oh, where's this last connector when the car is not equipped with it? So what I what I like to do, take a Sharpie or something, mark on the radio on where the connectors are at. Therefore, you're not trying to hunt a connector that doesn't exist. Because I've had that happen where on some of these, the whole back radio has connectors. And I didn't mark it while I'm trying to figure out where the one connector at. Come to find out it doesn't have that connector. But anyways, like I said, just push this in while unplugging. Now what I like to do is take a zip tie. I had one connector for all the way back here. I like to take a zip tie and zip tie all of these in one place so I don't lose one of the connectors. Because if you grab one of them, this is a whole bundle here. Well, the other one goes all the way down there. You may not find it. So I like to take a zip tie, zip tie together so I know they're all there. Now you're ready to go on with the new radio. There's the new one, the old one. We'll need to switch over the brackets. Fairly simple. Three screws, and off it goes. I even labeled this is the right side. This is going to be the left side, so three screws and off it goes. What I would recommend, don't take a Phillips head, because you will start to round up the screws. Take an eight millimeter socket to get them off. Alright, I've got the new one installed, plugged in. Let's, let's test it out. I like to let the car to accessory mode. Not start, but accessory mode. And wait till this is uh, finished loading. Hey look, we got the corner piece now. That was the lady's complaint was that bottom corner would not work. So I like to just test out functions, make sure the screen works, make sure the stations all work. Go to the car. Phones. There's no phones, so nope. Set up. Everything seems to be working. I'll go ahead and uh, do a software update for this lady too. Uh, for this one here, you'll have to uh, have a Toyota's account and a flash drive to be able to do software updates. So if you, a single person, don't have 
a Toyota account on TIS, you'll need to go to the dealership and they'll charge you a little fee to do the radio update on it. But other than that, go and put your four bolts back in. Plug in your connector here, connect it here, and go and put it on your trim panel back on place. So thanks for watching.